people in America from confronting those present-day leaders on the continent of Africa whose consciousness appears to be very progressive, one, whose consciousness is not making them to feel that they should invite their brothers and sisters in diaspora to come and possess some land. So, I see us, as I said, revisiting the wisdom of Malcolm X. Eight more years for this minute here to go. Eight more years. From the year 2001, I want to see us as a people here in America and in the Caribbean, the mind for teachers from the leaders on the continent of Africa to provide or make the land available. One, two, we want to have representations in the organization of African unity as a people. So that when we have representation on the level of African an organization of African unity, we could begin to actually explain or express exactly what we are going to or what we'll be going to or what we ought to be about doing for us to recapture and reunify ourselves for the year 2000. Thank you. Um, well, you, you covered a lot of things. Well, one of the things that I meant to say, and I came back to get this work, um, is that most of the leaders in Africa and the Caribbean were educated by the British and Americans. And our leadership is so proud of their own personal progress that they think it's great progress. Okay? Like, I got mine, so we must be making progress. Now, the illogic of their thoughts, because they personalize progress, if you talk about leadership, they don't think of collective progress, is that if the organization of African unity were to come together and say, the reason, Walter Biden said, the reason that Europe and America is rich because it underdeveloped Africa and the Americas. You believe that? Yes. You believe that? Yes. Okay. Yes. They stole our wealth. Now, how can somebody steal your money, then let you it back, <laughs> and then charge you into the stock? So as long as Africa, the Caribbean, and the Americas accept the conceptualization of a national debt, for money that was stolen, including the hundred million human people that died. And not until your leadership comes with a package that says, you owe us, you stole for everything you got, you stole from us. You didn't have no gold, you didn't have no silver, you didn't have no people, you didn't have no potatoes, you didn't have no cotton, you didn't have no rubber, you understand what I'm saying? But we don't. We are so, our leadership is embarrassed to say we have not made progress. And Walter Rodney said, how can you be an oppressed people and be embarrassed at the same time? <laughs> See, that's tremendous confusion. That's like the woman who's been raped but doesn't want to tell people she's been raped so she can't point out her accuser. And our leadership is not prepared to come to the world court like Mexico. Is it Mexico? Mexico said, I'm going back. You ain't getting a dollar from us. In every African country, and every Caribbean country, just shut down. And all third world countries just shut down. On the deck. Um, 
Castro came to the United Nations and made that argument, you know. The debt should be forgiven. If the debt should even be mentioned in fact. Now, if we had now they, you know there is a reparation bill, you know, I didn't make this up, you know, I think it's Delaware that put Well, you've got to see, the, the problem is what the young man said. You don't have collective leadership. You have Negro leadership. Yeah, Negro leadership. You have each Negro, you know, like in my, in my town, the first commission on racism that our wonderful mayor, created was to investigate the black people being racist against the Koreans. That's real. Is that true? You think? That's the only commission he's ever created on racism. You get a black president, a black man, and he has begun to investigate black people oppressing Koreans after the woman died, the Haitian woman died. And that's Negro leadership. Now, John Clark said, and I believe, you're not going to have that kind of revolution until you get African leadership that worships African gods, that speaks in African religion. But they don't. They all go dominant for this dimension. And that's the problem. That's the problem. It, see, leadership is not the person who's out front. Leadership is the person who worries about the collective good. And these people are more like, what? What's in the Provincia with all those guys? You know, they got, a, what, what's this guy, you know, Lenny, Lenny justifies him. But this guy, where is it? Sunny Island, where is it? The Silicon now? Oh, yeah. The Marcus the Silicon the world? Yeah. Um, you know? And he said, well, it'll bring tourism in there. Well, he could have taken all that money and developed an industry. And we all could be wearing Senegalese shoes and drawers. You know? We all wear drawers. You know? You understand? But we don't do that. We just, we, we are colonized in the mind. And we do not want to give up because African gods require you to be responsible immediately. And the European God not to worry about the children there. You understand what I mean? You can ignore the European God until you're dead. And most of us say, I'll worry about that when I meet my maker. If you deal with the African or Native American, you meet your maker every day. This old baby is on my butt. You see how much I look like? This old baby is on my butt every morning. You know, she's floating around now. I'm here, you know, she's dead, but she's floating. Her spirit is there all the time. You see? And, that, and we don't speak to that. That's the problem. So I don't know what we're going to do. I don't think it's going to get better. When the sisters take over, We'll move to collectivity. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> this is taking off. <laughs> My question is, um, a few weeks ago, um, our white counterparts launched an attack on our people questioning the discovery of America. And they always call us mad when we say that, you know, we question their authority in this and so they went out and did their own research um, where they claim they got the original diary of Columbus from this Catholic church. Yeah. It was an original dialect of Spanish. And um, their interpretation of it was that Columbus discovered America to bring Christianity to America. And that um, they had all these maps and so forth of his journey and everything. So, my question is, is there um, literature on Columbus's diaries? No, diaries out in, in, it's out in every supermarket. It's in Sears. <laughs> and it's original language and it is translation. But, but sister, this is the same thing my students did. When Columbus arrived, he called the people here, Los Indios. Well, that meant people were here. 
I mean, that's the end of that discussion, isn't it? I don't understand how anybody moves to any other level. You know, I don't understand why you all